Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a tag video that I was tagged in, the My Fragrance Addiction tag, or the, yeah, My Fragrance Addiction tag by Emmy's World of Fragrance. She tagged me, thank you so much. So there are 12 questions and I haven't done a tag in a while, or at least one that wasn't my own um, in a while. So yeah, we're just gonna get into it. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. And let's start with question number one. So I'm just gonna read these questions and go along. The first one's why do you use fragrance for a mood booster, habit, compliments, or any other reason? I would say the least likely is compliments. Um, I really, it sounds weird, I suppose, but I couldn't really care less what anyone else thinks about my fragrance in terms of whether or not they like what I like. Um, I like most fragrances, at least a little, like I can find something I like about a lot of fragrances and I feel like more people in my life have more like specific tastes and they'll like some that I wear and they'll be less into others, but I kind of like everything and the most I would say is like sometimes if I know someone likes something, um, I'll wear it around them. Um, on special occasions or something, but or I'll buy them that fragrance for their birthday or whatever it may be, but that's really it. In general, I would say the closest answer would be habit slash mood booster, but not really even um, mood booster. I just feel like incomplete without fragrance. And I've always felt that way. I mean, you guys know, for those of you who've been watching that I've loved fragrance ever since I can remember. It's one of my first Memories were as always like scent and fragrance based even if it wasn't fragrance like I have a lot of scent based memories growing up and I just love it. I love to be surrounded by perfume every time I'm Working on my computer or in a different room or wherever I'm at. I will take a couple bottles with me I'm like that crazy fragrance lady. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like a part of me like a very innate part of me at this point. Um, so it's more, it's more so I suppose habit slash mood booster depending on my mood. Then how much uh, do you wear and where do you apply perfume? <sighs> I wear a lot of perfume. I am an oversprayer in general. Uh, there are definitely fragrances that you can't get, or I can't get away with it and they need to be sprayed more sparingly and I've learned that the hard way. But in general, I spray kind of in this general area, a couple sprays. Um, I will, I do like to get it in my hair and on my clothing along with my skin and sometimes like down my arms as well. I do remember there was this old Chanel number no. five commercial that I would watch on YouTube because it, it's like before I was born. Um, and I think her name was like Catherine Deneuve. I think that was hers, but I'm not sure. Um, and she was talking about where she wears Chanel number no. five and she would always, she said that she would put a couple drops behind her knees, which I don't know why that memory's always stuck with me. But for a while after I saw that commercial, I would wear perfume behind my knees. Um, and then I stopped because I couldn't be bothered. But yeah, I think I just, you know, spray in this general area and depending on the lightness, of the fragrance and my mood, I will spray more sprays of that particular fragrance. Or if I'm layering, obviously I'm wearing more fragrance. Then uh, how many perfumes do you use per day? This has also changed during, you know, quarantine or just COVID in general, spending more time at home has made me wear more fragrances during the day or throughout the day and also starting this channel has made me wear more fragrances throughout the day because I'm more likely to be trying out scents and testing them prior to videos for you guys. So if I'm having like a testing day, then I might try like wear four to six fragrances throughout the day on different parts of my body or, you know, like sleeping with them to see which ones still remain on the skin in the morning. But in general, I would say at minimum, at absolute minimum, at least two fragrances a day. Um, and then in, in all likelihood, way, way more uh, than that. But yeah, at least two. And then do you enjoy other perfumed products? I do. I know this is not the case for everyone. I think there are actually a lot of people that 
only like fragrance and then wear everything else like unscented. Um, I'm not one of those people. I like scented everything. Honestly, I even like scented face lotion, um, which I know like skincare wise is not the best. And I do change it up uh, from time to time and have more and less scented face products in recent years. But if it were up to me, I do like just a little bit of scent at the very least in everything. Um, one of the things I do use a lot, especially kind of spring, fall, winter, less so in the summer, are candles. I just pulled out this one because I've been burning it lately and I really do like it. It's by Nest and it's the orange blossom one. Um, it's only like a one wick candle, but these ones are no joke. They really fill up a, a room quickly. But in general, I've used a million and one Bath and Body Works candles and there's some I love, some that burn nicely and some I wouldn't purchase again and take me forever to use up. And I do like them. I like them, as I say, most months and seasons out of the year. And I definitely enjoy them for baths as well. One product that I absolutely love for it to be scented is lip products because unscented lip products do have a smell and I hate that smell. I hate the smell of unscented lip products because they smell awful and it kind of makes it taste awful as well. Um, my favorite scented lip product is by Too Faced and it's the Sweet Peach Creamy Peach Oil Lip Gloss. I have three of these. Oh my God, and I love them. This is my favorite. I love peach scented things. And this is a very like peach, creamy peach candy scent. Uh, but in general, I love, I love the L'Oreal scent, like lipstick smell, which a lot of people complain about, but I love that smell. It's very like classic lipstick smelling. Um, yeah, I adore it. I cannot stand when fragrances, when lipsticks or lip products don't have a scent. And I might be in the minority on that and I don't mind because I love it. And then which fragrance in your collection best represents your current taste and aesthetic? That's difficult because as I say, I wear a lot of fragrances throughout the day. And right now I'm like testing a bunch of fragrances that the haul videos haven't already gone up for you guys. So I don't wanna show those. I wouldn't say this fragrance that I'm gonna show is like my aesthetic lately, but I have been enjoying it. Um, a lot, and that's Heliotrope by Frank uh, Buckley. And this is a really beautiful fragrance, but I would say it's not a great blind buy unless you know you like like Heliotrope almondy fragrances um, that kind of edge towards being very classic and mature smelling because I've said before, but I, f I feel like this is something like royalty would wear, um, like Queen Elizabeth, like older royalty. Um, it's rich and it's definitely got, because of that heliotrope, like a powdery, uh, sweet almond note to it, um, but it, and kind of medicinal in a way as well. And I love it. I really, really like it. And I even like the bottle. It's very heavy. Like, I don't know what it is about it, but I've, I've been super into it. And I was very worried because the Violet uh, by Frank Bucklet I was going to get, but I've just heard that it's so not blind by safe uh, that I went with Heliotrope and I'm really happy I did. And how I wear this is actually pretty unique because I just wear it on my, on the back of my palms, um, on both sides. And I feel like two to three sprays is actually enough. And I like it to be further from my nose because I feel like it really rises. Like it's, it's hard to explain, but this fragrance isn't one that I would enjoy wearing super oversprayed and close to my nose, even though I'm an oversprayer, it's just very rich. And I feel like I like to wear it on my arm so that it's wafting um, and that I can smell it. Uh, but that it's not choking me out. Um, so yeah, I've really liked that one uh, lately and I've been wearing it a whole lot. All right, so the next question is fragrances that you love but you don't wear often and why? There are a lot of fragrances that I love and don't wear often because when you have hundreds of fragrances, you cannot just wear all the fragrances you love often. 
Um, that just goes without saying. But there are definitely fragrances that I love and I don't wear often for more specific reasons and I'm trying to change that. So one of the ones that came to mind immediately was Dior Addict. I have the second formulation, the like dream formulation um, that everyone in into fragrance kind of says is the best and I love it. I love this fragrance. I love like I loved buying it, I loved finding it, like it was just the whole experience of getting this fragrance when I did, for how inexpensive I did, and I've talked about it before, was just like all the stars aligning. And for a while I did wear it super often. I, I've used maybe like 40% of it already. And this is a, what is it, like a 50 mil? I think, yeah. So, when it reached that point, I started to get worried because it was reformulated and I have yet to try this new formulation, but I just, I'd heard horror stories, how it's so different. And I just kind of got in my head that I always wanted to have a little bit of this and I stopped wearing it. And I have tried to get out of my head about that because that isn't a mentality I ever want to have. And I have been better ever since last year, like over a year now to wear fragrances like this that I love, that are discontinued or old formulations and just enjoying them because life is too short to keep these around for this magical day where it's gonna be worth it for me to wear. So especially now, I mean like special occasions are few and far in between and this is very much like a fall winter fragrance for me. So it's not like I'd even wear it all the months during the year. Um, so I have been better about wearing it, not as good as I'd like to be, um, cause I just want to use it and enjoy it. But that is a reason that sometimes keeps me away from wearing fragrances. If they're super hard to find and I just love them too much and I don't have any backups or want to get any, um, it does keep me away from wearing it. Then do you divide your fragrance by masculine, feminine, seasonal, or based on any other categories in terms of categorizing them of how I store them, not at all. Um, that's just really because there's only so many places I can store them and I've already run out of room. So I just kind of more or less store them where they fit. Uh, sometimes I keep ones I'm more inclined to wear uh, in the bedroom and then ones that I'm less inclined to wear in the other room. Uh, but that it also is just where they fit. However, I definitely have a, like a mood difference on cold weather fragrances and warm weather fragrances. And a lot of the time I don't even really subscribe to that because I'll wear whatever I'm in the mood from for and I'll wear super summery fragrances in the dead of winter because I'm exhausted of winter time. But I'm less likely to wear a fall time fragrance in the summer. That's harder to get away with. I feel like you can wear a summery fragrance in the winter um, much easier than you can wear a wintry fragrance in the summer, but that's just me. Um, and masculine and feminine, I have both types of fragrances. I don't even really, it's more just what I'm in the mood for. So I don't really divide them up in my head in that way, unless I just know that it's not really gonna work in a particular season. And I always tell you guys, because I know a lot of people do feel very strongly about like seasonal changes and changing up their collection. And for me, it's just, I see them all as one and slight differences with fragrances that I just feel like might choke you out or might be too citrusy for the dead of winter or something. But in general, not really. Um, I just house them all together. And then how do you typically purchase fragrances? Do you sample blind buys? Do you try them out in store? So I would say before when we could very easily try out fragrances in store, I was doing that a lot more often. Um, just like free samples in store or just spraying like a million and different one fragrances all over my limbs while shopping. Um, but in general, I've always been pretty into blind buying and I've talked about that in my blind buying video that that's part of the thrill for me. And I've gotten pretty good at it over the years, so I do enjoy that and that whole process. I have had a few occasions throughout the years, obviously, where I've sampled fragrances before purchasing them, but in general, that is 
quite rare. And if I find something that I feel like I would like, I don't really have a lot of qualms about ordering it blind. To each their own, I would recommend for a lot a lot of people that aren't as comfortable to sample, but I'm like a full bottle lover kind of gal, so I, I will tend to blind buy over sampling, honestly. Um, then, what fragrances from your collection was not a love at first sight and took you some time to love? So, there were a lot of fragrances that kind of fit that bill for me, um, but they also change and sometimes I don't end up loving them after, you know, until a couple months or a year goes by and sometimes it's more immediate. The one I pulled out is one that in the blind buy when I was in that haul video, I was just like not really feeling it. I think I put it last. And then by the time the second impression video came around a couple weeks later, I was already super into it. And I don't wear it as often as I should, but I smelled it today and this was a good like cheap pick to pick. And this was at, this is just Adam Levine's for her or women, whatever it is. Um, and when I smelled it, I think I was hauling too many fragrances at once. And like the first spray just was more alcohol than I thought, but it's actually really beautiful. It's very warm and spiced in a way I enjoy. It actually reminds me a little bit of, um, True Lust by Italie d'Orange, which I love. And I love that part of it. It's it's super cuddly. I feel like this is a really great like sweater fragrance, even for something like this. It's it's very warm. And within a week, I would say, I had already changed my mind about it in terms of being more positive. And within a couple weeks, I really, really liked it. Um, and when I do wear it, I know it looks like I haven't, but I genuinely have. When I do wear it, I always enjoy the experience. So that's like a really inexpensive pick where I was not really feeling it, but I wasn't super disappointed because of how inexpensive it was, but it ended up flipping kind of complete 180 and I ended up really loving it by the end. All right, so the next question, question 10, how do you handle fragrance fails or disappointments? So because I blind buy, that's obviously a possibility and it happens from time to time, certainly. And I feel like even that has tears for me of like how disappointed I am with it and how much of a fail it is represents how I end up dealing with it. And especially for someone like me who's kept every bottle they've ever had and only just gives out decants and never, you know, sells full bottles, you really do have to come up with a system that works. So the worst of the worst, and this happens very rarely, it's less than five times in my entire fragrance journey has this happened where a fragrance just does not work for me and I can't stomach it and no one else that I know can stomach it either. Um, and that one of the best examples of this, cause I could only really think of this one, but I'm, I'm it's happened like maybe three times is Womanity by Terry Mugler. I loathe this fragrance. I mentioned it before. It was super inexpensive, just like a Marshall's pick. It was like 20 something. Um, and I wouldn't have thought this would be the case because even for the fragrances that people don't usually uh, love for Thierry Mugler, I have liked a lot of his. Um, not this one though. It really smells like fishy and sweaty and like figs. It's just everything that is like controversial and bad about that fragrance in terms of those who really hate it, I smell and I smell none of the good stuff. Um, so that's one and it lasts forever, you guys. The performance on it is insane. So that one I do struggle with and for the other two that I feel this way that I can't even recall, those are the hardest. Um, and if I wasn't so much of a collector I would just sell them, um, but I'm gonna find a way to use them. I just haven't done so yet. Then we get to kind of like the medium fragrances where nothing went wrong with it per se. I just, it's just kind of blah. Those ones I will wear on me on the days that I want to, but I'll also end up using them a lot as like air fresheners on pillow sprays. Like I will overspray that particular fragrance because I know I'm not really super eager to wear it. So when I'm spraying it on myself and or things and furniture, 
I'm really gonna go ham. And I end up using a lot of these fragrances that way. One such example is Rare Ring Princess. It helps because it really wasn't inexpensive, um, or it was inexpensive. And it's just, it's nothing remarkable. Um, and so it doesn't really bother me in scent at all. It just doesn't wow me. And it's, they're usually lighter and they're usually generic smelling fragrances. So they end up working well as air fresheners or on your duvet or whatever it ends up being. It just kind of freshens up the whole place. So I use those in that way. And then finally, the like best type of fail is when they're not a true fail at all. They're just a fragrance that I end up feeling like I like, but I don't love. And I expect it to love it so it feels like a fail. And those I just kind of mental note for myself to wear from time to time when I'm more in the mood for them. And they tend to be more like example or expensive fragrances that I just thought I was gonna love more that I ended up loving. And one great example of this is Dama Blanca by Casa Marati. Note wise and description wise and packaging wise, like everything about this fragrance should have made me love it. And I just like it. I'll wear it from time to time. And you know, when I think about it or I'm in the mood for it, but it just wasn't a love. And so when it ended up being just a like, it just felt like a bit of a letdown, but I'll definitely wear it when I'm in the mood for it. And then fragrance on your wish list that you're not able to purchase and why there's a lot, but there's one that's actually two that has remained with me ever since I found it and it kills me. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who cares about this fragrance, but I will put up a picture. It is the Nivea fragrance. There are actually two. If I only had to get one, I'd get the blue one, like the OG, but I do want both. I love the Nivea scent. I have ever since I was little, I have very strong scent memory with it and I think it's stunning. And the fact that Nivea came out with a fragrance that's only available, I think in the UK and maybe Germany, because it's a German brand, but I always, like when I search to the depths of the world, the only place I even see that it's possible to purchase from is the UK. So I mental note for myself that if and when I'm ever in either of those two countries, this is one I have to get. I, I just think it'd be like the perfect gift for me from people in those two countries because I love it and it would be such a dream to get it. And from the very few reviews I've seen, it smells very authentic to the Nivea scent. So yeah, that would be mine. And I can't get it because it's not available even online. Uh, otherwise I would. And then what percentage of your collection is niche designer and celebrity? Final question. For me, it's more or less, um, I don't want to say even, but I definitely have a substantial amount in all of those three. I have the least amount of indie fragrances. Uh, definitely. I have some, but th that's definitely the least. And then in recent years, I've accumulated a lot more niche fragrances. Um, I'd say maybe I have the most designer niche followed up very closely in second and then celebrity in third. But in general, I feel like they're, they're probably pretty evenly split designer being um, more ahead. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.